नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ व्हाट डज दिस डेटा से नाउ टुडे लेट अस टॉक ऑफ बिहार एंड व्हेनेवर आई टॉक ऑफ बिहार आई गेट अ काइंड ऑफ मिक्स्ड फीलिंग्स ऑन द वन हैंड वी हैव दीस यंग बिहारी मेन एंड वुमेन वेरी एंटरप्राइजिंग दे ट्रैवल थाउजेंड्स ऑफ माइल्स looking for employment just in order to feed themselves and their families back home there is practically no state in india today where you won't find a hard working bihari young boy or a girl on the other hand we have the political class of bihar who have been running the affairs of this state for the last 75 years now this class appears to be devoid of the realities around them they are least bothered what is happening in the rest of the country they are only bothered about their political survival within that state it appears that this political class is lost in space and time for the last 75 years bihar has remained standstill so today it is a matter of survival for the young biharis so who is responsible for the bad state of affairs in bihar is it the political class or is it the bihari people themselves stay with me and i am going to present to you some very exciting data on this aspect let's have a look at some of the recent political developments in the state of bihar About a month ago Nitish Kumar had announced that he is going to conduct a caste census in the state of Bihar. Now this did not go well with the BJP central leadership. They have all along been against conducting any caste based census within the country. However, Nitish Kumar was smart enough. He called a all party meeting and pushed through this proposal. when all the political parties in the state of bihar supported this uh, natish kumar's proposal bjp state unit had to fall in line they came up with some riders but ultimately have agreed that a caste based census can be done now that's another thing that the bjp in bihar has no other option but to support natish kumar The last assembly election in Bihar was held in 2020 and today we are somewhere midway that is Nitish Kumar is halfway through. The next election is going to be held in 2025 so this decision of Nitish Kumar regarding the caste census keeping in mind the next election. The Bihar assembly has 243 seats the halfway mark is 122 in the last election nda has 127 seats 77 contributed by bjp and 45 by jdu on the other side is the mahagathbandhan led by rjd which was the single largest party in that election having 80 seats and then we have the congress and others which contribute 20 more seats If you want to know what is the strike index uh, see my last episode where I have explained this but the figures of the strike index indicate that BJP is in a very precarious position so if they don't support Nitish Kumar at any time Nitish Kumar is just one jump away to join the Mahagathbandhan and continue his chief ministership and this is something that the bjp wants to avoid at all cost it doesn't want to find itself out of power when the next elections are held in 2025 nitish kumar feels that his electoral stock vis-a-vis the bjp is dwindling and therefore this caste based census is going to help him recover the political ground and therefore he is exploiting the situation to the fullest If you have observed these days Nitish doesn't comment on any of the initiatives which have been taken by the BJP whether it was the presidential candidate nomination or the Agnipath scheme in fact Modi is not too happy with Nitish on the stance that he has taken for the Agnipath scheme in fact of late and to the displeasure of the BJP Nitish has been rather indifferent towards the Bharatiya Janata Party 
थ्रू द कास्ट सेंसस नीतीश कुमार वॉन्ट्स टू आउटविट एंड आउट स्मार्ट द भारतीय जनता पार्टी बैटल फॉर बिहार फॉर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव हैज ऑलरेडी बिगन एंड दिस बैटल इज नॉट बिटवीन नीतीश एंड द महागठबंधन इट इज बिटवीन नीतीश कुमार एंड द बीजेपी द अर्थमेटिक इज वेरी सिंपल फॉर नीतीश कुमार He has 45 MLAs and he is the chief minister in an assembly of 243. The opposition today has close to 115 seats. That is the Mahagathbandhan and the Congress. Now, if Nitish uh, drops further, he comes down to about 20 or 25 MLAs. Then no one is going to make him the chief minister. Neither the BJP nor the Mahagathbandhan. so it is imperative that he maintains his share rather tries to increase it so that he can retain his bargaining power on the other hand the bjp is also thinking in a similar manner they feel that if they can increase their uh, mla count by snatching a few from nitish kumar then after the next election they will have full control in the state of bihar and that is where all the dirty caste politics is coming into play bihar is one state where casteism has been deep rooted into that society bihar is also infamous for the numerous caste wars that have happened in the state in the last 50 years more than 100 caste wars have been documented in which thousands of people have been killed I am just giving you a glimpse of this here the details you can find in the link which I have given below one thing to observe is that most of the caste wars have happened between the upper caste landlords and the lower caste scheduled castes or the dalits this is the list from 82 to 86 again it is the upper caste against the lower scheduled caste The last reported caste war was in 2013 between the Rajputs and the Dalits, which left 50 people dead. There are not many documentary proofs of caste wars after 2013. That is when the political dispensation changed in the country. There are a few skirmishes, but then they often don't get reported. The last caste census in the country was done in 1931 by the Britishers. Thereafter, no caste census has ever been done, and rightly so. However, the UPA government in 2011 did conduct a socio-economic based caste census, but they were not able to publish the results before they were voted out of power. In 2014, when the Modi government came to power, they had a look at this data and decided that they will withhold the caste data and they published the remaining key findings. Nitish Kumar believes that if he knows the precise number of the population of each caste in the state, that will help him tailor the reservation policy and also ensure. equitable distribution of benefits but the bjp says that there is always a possibility that this caste census will lead to heartburn and it could again lead to caste wars it has also alleged that mere act of labeling a person as belonging to a certain caste tends to perpetuate the system and rightly so there has to be a day when we stop this caste system in india and not only this the definition of caste itself is quite dubious in our country the socio economic survey had come out with a figure of 4.3 lakh castes in the country castes and sub castes whereas recently the central government has given an affidavit in the supreme court stating that there are only 3747 castes within the country BJP is cautioning the Nitish government not to dig too deep into this caste issue because you can well imagine that if he comes out with four and a half lakh caste and then you start appeasing each one of them, what is going to happen to the state of Bihar? A hugely fragmented society is going to get further fragmented, and that is going to lead to an unrest. 
The population of Bihar in 2021 stood at 12 crores 88 lakhs. 83.3% were Hindus and 16.7% Muslims. This is the only state in the country where the Hindu population and the Muslim population is above the national average. This means that the minorities are almost missing in the state of Bihar. Let's have a quick look at the caste demographics of Bihar. There are 33 OBC castes in the state which include the Yadavs which is the caste of Lalu Yadav and his family and the Kurmis which is the caste of Nitish Kumar. Another surprising thing was that we find Muslims also having castes and are part of OBC and the EBC categories. The economically backward castes in the state are 113. The scheduled caste 22 which consists of Dalits and Mahadalits, scheduled tribes 29 and the general or the upper caste are 7 which are the Bhumihars which are the landlords in the state, Rajputs, Brahmans, Kayas, Baranwal, Thakur and Jats. Though Nitish Kumar and the Yadavs come from the OBC category, Nitish Kumar found it more beneficial to seek the support of the BJP which is a party known for its support to the upper castes. So Bihar remains a state where about 80% of its population is in the backward category. We have the OBC EBC at 48%, the scheduled caste Dalit Mahadalit 16%, scheduled tribes 1%, Muslim 17% and the forward caste are only 18%. So why does Nitish Kumar fear the BJP when it comes to caste politics? The next figure is going to make everything. This is a figure of caste and community representation among the MLAs who were elected in the 2020 election. The number of MLAs is listed here in each of the major political parties. The color code of these bars is as follows. The light blue color here represents the OBC category. For instance, the JDU and the RJD both have the 50% MLAs coming from the OBC EBC category whereas for the BJP it's around 37% and only 10% of the MLAs in Congress come from the OBC category. The brown bar next to this represents the upper caste. So BJP has the maximum number of people from the upper caste followed by the Congress and then the JDU and then the RJD. The grey color represents the scheduled caste, the yellow the scheduled tribes and then the bluish color which is here represents the Muslim. It may be noted that there are no Muslim MLAs in the JDU and the BJP. The RJD vote bank remains strong and stable. The Congress is already down to its lowest performance so the tussle remains between the JDU and the BJP. So Nitish Kumar's attempt via the caste census is to further dissect these blue bars here pertaining to the OBC EBC categories and having done that then he can go and dish out all the goodies to these people so that they keep voting for him or even switch the side from the BJP to the JDU. Now putting this plan in action is going to take time and therefore I say that the battle for Bihar for 2025 has already started. So in this uncertain and volatile situation in Bihar, what does a young Bihari do? He migrates out of the state where not only he gets employment but then no one is really bothered about his caste over there. He gains some respectability in life which he doesn't get back home. 
In terms of interstate migration, Bihar stands second only to Uttar Pradesh. 15% of the interstate migration within the country comes from Biharis leaving Bihar. The state economy has failed to generate enough employment opportunities within the state, which is the biggest region of migration. It is estimated that anywhere between 1.5 to 2 crore Biharis today are working outside the state. And when you ask them the reason of migration, the biggest region stands is they are here for work and employment. 55% of Biharis leave the state due to work or employment against the India average of just 24%. So unemployment remains the biggest challenge for the state government. They hardly create any jobs locally and always look forward to central government jobs in the army or the railways. Today, Bihar's unemployment rate stands at 14%. There are two states having a very high unemployment rate of around 30%. However, Haryana and Rajasthan people don't migrate out of the state in that numbers as the Biharis do. Now to end this episode, I'll just give you a glimpse of the performance dashboard of the state of Bihar. The GDP or the per capita GDP of, the, of a state has a lot to tell about the affairs of that state. The per capita GDP of Bihar in 2020 stands at only 46,292 rupees. Compare that with Goa, which has a per capita GDP of 4,36,000 rupees, and then that of Haryana around 2.5 lakh rupees. Here is the performance dashboard of Bihar. I have picked up these values from one of the RBI's reports on Indian states. I compare Bihar with the rest of India. Any red cell which you see here means that that parameter is worse off than the India average. For instance, sex ratio, females per thousand males, Bihar stands at 918. Compare that with India average of 943. Literacy rate in percentage, 61.8%. Compare that with India average of 73%. Enrollment in higher secondary, Bihar stands at the bottom. Population density, Bihar is three times more dense than rest of India. Birth rate still is about 20-25% higher than that of India. They produce more kids than the rest of the country. Infant mortality and life expectancy is equal to that of the Indian rate. And then we come to unemployment, which is almost double when you compare it with the Indian average. And this fact gets further highlighted in Niti Ayo Sustainable Development Goal index which is published every year where Bihar has been retaining the last position for three consecutive years. This year the overall Bihar score was 52 and it was at the bottom of the list whereas Kerala which is which has been on top always had a score of 75. This report is available on Niti Aayog's website. Many people say that why should we be bothered if Bihar is doing badly? There are three reasons and, and then I'll close this episode. Firstly, when one and a half crore Biharis land up in other state, it creates a pressure on the local job market. They are taking away jobs which would otherwise have been done by the locals and then it creates a problem of local versus outsiders as it happened in Maharashtra. Secondly, the social economic caste survey has also talked of rural distress. When people stay away from their homes for a very long time, it creates its own social problems and then those people tend to come under a sort of distress which is not easy to cope up with. Their earnings are meager, they don't go home very frequently, maybe once in a year. So there are several problems will start cropping up. 
and lastly on the financial front bihar is not generating enough revenue for itself so it has to depend on support from the central government and that support comes in in form of grants and subsidies now that money actually belongs to people in the country who are earning that money which is the progressive state and that gets transferred in terms of central assistance to bihar so bihar remains a net importer of revenue this casteism in bihar has to stop some day otherwise i see no future for bihar in the near future so that's all in this episode this week i'll see you again next week till then goodbye and namaskar Thank you.